Turkey is going through very hard times. Uh, our democracy was under attack on the July 15th. Our parliament was under attack. Our parliamentary system was under attack. People usually focus on the negative side of it, but I would like to bring another dimension of the events. What is interesting to see is maybe it implies the end of the political polarization in the country. Because that night, people from every political affiliations, all political affiliations, put to the streets to defend democracy and oppose the pushists. I believe it, is a, it was a turning point. Another interesting point was that uh, the Europe, the Europe's weak reaction. It was a quite a big disappointment for all Turks, especially for Democrats, because we wanted to see European leaders and the EU decision makers together with us. To be honest, it was not the most glorious um, moment for the European solidarity. Our leader, Mr. Kılıçdaroğlu, uh, faced with a PKK attack. It was a very unfortunate moment. Fortunately, he, he was unharmed, but it showed us how terrorism can choose a target from our um, political sphere. It can be also an opposition, main opposition leader. When I said the end of opportunity for an end of the polarization, I meant the uh, political discourse in the country. You know, there was a unity a rally in Turkey and all major political parties' leaders were present there and raised their voice, speak up against the pushists in the country. Of course, after math of the coup attempt in the country, we do not approve what's going on in the country. Of course, we confirm, we agree, and we find it normal, the dismissal of the pushists in the system, in the state. But at the same time, several times, we urged government and all authorities in the country to be careful about their reactions, being proportional, and at the same time, uh, being uh, reasonable, lawful with their actions. So, so far, um, uh, where we are now, there are many Democrats uh, detained uh, within the framework of uh, security operations uh, in the aftermath of um, the military uh, coup attempt. We hope that the, all of them will be released soon and we will put an end to it. Turkey is still in the state of emergency and we believe that it shouldn't be extended. Turkey should be normalized and get back to the democratic track. And of course, Europe's role will be very important in that. Uh, just recently, high-level delegations and the politicians from European Union uh, and from member states started to visit Turkey and they're a bit shocked uh, from what they are seeing there, the traces of the military coup. It is an ongoing judiciary process. So at the end of the judiciary process, we'll see who was behind this military coup attempt. Europe was lagging behind to understand what was happening and who were affiliated with the pushes and how serious were the events and whether it was even a true coup or just a uh, manipulation or, uh, or something like that or um, uh, a scenario. So currently they understand, well, it was a real coup attempt. We don't know who are behind it. Yes, there are strong evidences in the way that uh, an organization uh, is in link with those pushes. It's true that this organization um, has an extensive network, especially abroad, more than uh, it has in Turkey. What I would like to say, Europe should be clear about its stance. Whoever is trying to overthrow an elected government, bombing the parliament, attacking at civilians, should be condemned without question. And also Europe should be very careful about choosing the partners 
with Turkey. So, and not determine those partners based on which government is in what type of relationship, whether it is good or bad, with any type of obscure organization. This is what I would like to say. So far, for many years, we did not observe Europe um, enough careful by choosing its partners and uh, information sources. And I believe it led Europe to make wrong judgments, um, wrong, developing wrong policies in a way. To better understand each other between Turkey uh, and the European Union, there are uh, certain steps need to be taken. First of all, uh, re-energizing EU accession is very important. European Union is rightly criticizing Turkey for the violation of fundamental rights or uh, independence of judiciary or media freedom. But at the same time, European Union is neglecting to see that it has a great tool at its hand are the uh, negotiation chapters. There are chapters in link with those issues, 23 and 24, but blocked since the negotiations almost opened. So first of all, European Union should restructure its approach to Turkey, its Turkey policy. And the European Union should face that its Turkey policy so far failed, and they really need to reinvent it starting from the chapters. But chapters, of course, not enough at alone. At the same time, making Europe's presence better and stronger in Turkey is important. Turkey's Democrats are feeling very lonely. Those are people pro-European, pro-Western, pro-democracy, and they are feeling very much abandoned in Turkey. And being together with Democrats in Turkey is not just releasing press statements or occasional visits to Turkey. No, it is to keep Turkey in the loops of the European Union and better integrating Turkey and investing in Turkey. It is the only solution. Other uh, steps, of course, needs to be taken by Turkish government. We are encouraging urgent Turkish government to go back to the, the Turkey's EU accession process and making reforms in this process, starting from the judicial independence, uh, press freedom, those are two important issues for us. And also there are chapters which are not blocked, uh, three, three chapters, social policy and employment, public procurement and competition chapters. Those chapters are also very important for the quality of democracy. We are expecting Turkish government to make necessary reforms immediately and at the same time our European counterparts to be more eager to talk about them and encourage Turkish government to work on them. Brexit was an earthquake, earthquake uh, in the European politics, in the world actually, with this uh, seismic uh, influence uh, at the international scene. Yes, it will make an important impact on the future of Europe and at the same time Turkey's engagement with the EU. I believe that the epicenter of this earthquake is in the mainstream politics. Mainstream politics is not um, is not uh, active enough to engage European citizens with the European project, with European dream. European citizens are losing their faith in the European project and those politicians for many years contributed to this picture should question their place and their role in today's bad picture, bitter picture. Uh, I believe that mainstream politics needs to be reformed, restructured, being more citizen-oriented. Our political parties are still 20th century organizations. They need to be 21st century organizations to deal with 21st century citizens. Not a monologue, more a dialogue creating with citizens. This is what citizens are expecting. 
And once European Union is going to make it happen, Brexit will turn into an opportunity that rather than a crisis. And Europe will be a different Europe, tomorrow's Europe. And in tomorrow's Europe, Turkey, which fulfills the U European Union criteria, will find its place. I believe it will be a stronger Europe. I call this democracy definition as smart democracy. Because uh, in the century, our phones are smartphones. Our buildings are smart buildings. We are talking about smart cities. Why not we talk about smart democracy? This democratic structure too much focused on elections and the results of elections. Democracy means much more than that. Democracy means much more than ballot boxes. It is about values. It is about people and their lives. So current sphere of politics, European politics, or look at the US, what's happening there, why Bernie Sanders uh, was a very strong candidate, why uh, Donald Trump attracted that much attention, or look at the UK politics, how things are evolving, all are giving us a, an important message, a need real need for change in the politics. If we are not going to change politics, we cannot change democracy. We cannot change our democratic institutions. We cannot make them citizen-oriented organizations and institutions. Once Europe will make it, it will be a world leader to change also the world politics.